The following presentation covers the following topics. The etiology and diagnosis of chronic degenerative valve disease in dogs. The use of heart medications like enalapril and pemobendin to treat valve disease in dogs. The treatment of cough due to chronic degenerative valve disease. How to reduce anesthetic risk in the patient suffering from this condition. How to monitor the respiratory rate of a dog with heart disease. Follow-up diagnostic tests to monitor the progression of chronic degenerative valve disease. Charlie was an 8-years-old intact male miniature schnauzer presented for evaluation of a heart murmur. He was doing well at home. Other than loud breathing, no coughing or changes were noticed by the owner. Charlie's weight was 9 kilograms. He was not using any medications at the time of evaluation. Charlie was current on his vaccine's records, and a heartworm test performed three months before this evaluation was negative. On the physical exam, we found that Charlie was bright, alert, and responsive. However, he was a very excitable patient. His mucous membranes were pink and moist. The capillary refill time was less than two seconds. During auscultation, the attending veterinarian noticed a heart murmur grade 4 of 6 radiating to the right. The pulses were strong and synchronous. Also, the doctor detected no arrhythmias during auscultation. Lung sounded normal for a panting dog with no crackles or wheezes. No evidence of cough was noted during the physical examination. On the thoracic radiographs, the cardiac silhouette was moderately enlarged. However, the pulmonary vessels were average size, and there was no evidence of congestive heart failure. An echocardiogram showed that the left atrium is moderate to severely enlarge. The left ventricular internal dimension was upper average in diastole and low normal for body size in systole. The systolic function appears hyperdynamic, which is expected for a dog with mitral regurgitation. In addition, there was a significant mitral valve thickening and prolapse. The right atrium and ventricle were subjectively normal in size and function. No masses or effusions were noted. The primary and branch pulmonary arteries were subjectively normal in size. There was a large eccentrically directed jet of mitral regurgitation, the velocity of which suggested normal systemic systolic blood pressure. There was also tricuspid regurgitation. No significant pulmonary hypertension was found. The ultrasonography noticed no other significant valvular regurgitation. Normal laminar flow was noted across the aortic and pulmonic valves during systole, though the aortic outflow velocity was minimally increased. The echocardiogram indicated a sinus rhythm and sinus tachycardia when Charlie was anxious. The ultrasonographer detected no other kinds of arrhythmias during the procedure. Based on the radiographs and echocardiogram results, Charlie was diagnosed with a condition known as degenerative valvular disease. Chronic degenerative valvular disease refers to a non-infectious degeneration of the heart valves. In dogs, the most commonly affected valve is the mitral valve located on the left side of the heart, followed by the tricuspid valve on the right side of the heart. We do not entirely understand why the valve leaflets become abnormally thickened and nodular over time. The change in the shape of the valves impedes the ability to form a tight seal, resulting in a leak. As a result, some of the blood in the ventricle leaks back into the atrium with each heartbeat and causes the heart murmur. Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, Miniature Poodles, Cocker Spaniels, Miniature Schnauzers, and Terrier breeds are the most commonly affected with chronic valvular disease. In addition, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels tend to develop chronic valvular illness earlier in life than other small breed dogs. Chronic degenerative valve disease can have a variable progression, so it is difficult to predict prognosis. However, many patients diagnosed with a chronic valvular disease have mild and slowly progressive conditions that may not affect their quality of life. However, the leaks become more severe with rapid disease progression, and the heart has to compensate for the additional workload. As a result, the heart muscle becomes more prominent until it can no longer compensate for the extra workload. Once the heart is not able to compensate, congestive heart failure develops. The fluid accumulation within the lungs resulting from congestive heart failure usually presents as coughing, shortness of breath, and rapid breathing. Congestive heart failure in its more severe form results in aggressive therapy, including oxygen supplementation and hospitalization. 
However, many cases that are caught early can be managed on an outpatient basis. Unfortunately, no drugs have proven effective in reversing the changes associated with chronic valvular disease in dogs. Our goal is to slow the progression of the disease since this condition before the onset of heart failure does not impact a dog's length or quality of life. The results of a recent study showed a clear benefit to using Pimobendin, brand name Betmedine, in dogs with moderate valvular degeneration and non-congestive heart failure. An ACE inhibitor like enalapril or venazapril is also an option, although evidence of efficacy has not been definitively established for dogs at this stage of the disease. Pimobendin is a drug that helps increase the heart's contractility and offers a benefit when given before the onset of heart failure. In the United States, Pimobendin is known under the brand name Betmedine. It has very side effects, but you should notify your veterinarian if your dogs exhibit signs of anorexia, vomiting, or diarrhea. Analapril is a drug that may offer some long-term cardiac protection. In the United States, Analapril is known under the brand name Inacard. However, Analapril can impact the kidneys, so the veterinarian would recheck the kidney values one or two weeks after starting the medication, then periodically in the future. This cardiac medication should be given as directed by the veterinarian. The dog's owner should notify the veterinarian if the patient develops signs of anorexia, vomiting, or diarrhea. Dogs with mitral valve disease can cough for one of several reasons. They can cough from fluid in the lungs, also known as pulmonary edema. They can also cough from chronic lower airway disease, which usually is referred to as bronchitis. Finally, they can cough from the enlarged heart pressing on and irritating the airways. A mild intermittent cough does not require treatment. However, when the cough is severe enough to impact the quality of life, the veterinarian would recommend cough medication. As there is no evidence of fluid in the lungs, the patient can use a cough suppressant such as hydrocodone if the coughing impacts the quality of life. The cough suppressant will not eliminate the cough, but it would make the dog more comfortable. The dog's owner should always consult with the primary veterinarian before using over-the-counter medications to suppress cough. Although there is an increased risk of anesthetic complications in patients with heart disease, with careful monitoring and a safe cardiac protocol, the risk of using general anesthesia can be reduced. However, in the case of Charlie, based on his heart size, there is a moderately increased risk for complications such as fluids overload with general anesthesia. If required, anesthetic recommendations include avoiding ketamine, telazole, dextormeter or other alpha-2 agonists, and asipromazine. The use of atropine and glycopyrrolate are typically reserved for use if hemodynamically significant bradycardia develops during anesthesia. If fluids are used, then cautious use of fluids is also recommended. In the case of Charlie, the doctor prescribed Pimobendin 5 mg tablets. The instructions to go home said that the owner should give half a tablet orally every 12 hours. This prescription is available at his primary veterinarian or any local pharmacy selling veterinary products. The veterinarian also prescribed enalapril 5 mg tablets. The owner was instructed to give Charlie one tablet in the morning and half a tablet at night. This medication is also available at his primary veterinarian or any local pharmacy. Due to a high incidence of counterfeit medications and poor quality products manufactured in foreign countries, we recommend not to obtain these medications from non-veterinary approved online pharmacies. Charlie's owner needs to monitor for signs of lethargy, collapse, exercise intolerance, coughing, or decreased appetite at home. If any of these clinical signs are noticed, the owner should contact Charlie's primary veterinarian immediately. The owner must become familiar with Charlie's respiratory rate and effort. An increase in either of these is one of the first signs of fluids in the lungs. When Charlie is at rest, the owner needs to observe his sides rise and fall as he breathes normally. One rise and fall cycle is equal to one breath. The owner should count the number of breaths Charlie takes in 15 seconds, then multiply by 4 to get the total breaths per minute. For example, if the owner counts 8 breaths in 15 seconds, that equals 32 breaths per minute. An average dog at rest should have a respiratory rate of less than 40. If the owner notices the respiratory rate increasing consistently or notice an increase in the effort it takes to breathe, Charlie's owner should contact the primary veterinarian immediately. 
the veterinarian should recheck kidney values 7 to 14 days after the initial use of heart medications. In addition, Charlie should have a chest radiograph and kidney values repeated every 4 to 6 months to monitor the chronic valve disease progression. These diagnostics procedures can be done at the primary veterinarian. Finally, Charlie should visit the veterinary cardiologist in 9 to 12 months for another echocardiogram. Don't hesitate to contact your local veterinarian if you suspect that your dog is showing signs of cardiac disease.